super coach and fantasy sports show. You are now listening to the Insight Fantasy Sports Podcast. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Whatever time you are listening to this podcast, I'm your host, Super Coach Hawk, Rob Kennedy. And if you're watching us on YouTube, you can see there's only one head in the studio. If you're listening along, that's correct. It's only me today giving you the round eight information you need. Unfortunately, my boy, Mickey Dell, the big horse, is busy with work and family life. So we're going to dive straight into the facts. I'm going to try and keep this as lively as I can. Here's the man of the stats. He's certainly the man who knows how to, uh, to give us some massive insight. Um, but look, we'll see what we can do. I've done my best. I've actually put some slides together. For those who are watching on YouTube, you can play along. For those who are listening, I guarantee I'll talk you through it. We're going to get straight into it. We're going to talk about the break-evens. Maybe those who are a bit on the fringe, I'm going to give you my insights. Maybe those who are on the down as well. A little bit of AFL news. I'm sure everybody's across it. But uh, let's just dive straight in. If you haven't already, make sure you click subscribe. Now is the time that you definitely don't want to miss out on anything Insight Fantasy Sport at all. So that being said, let's jump in and have a little look at a bit of round eight prep. First and foremost, I just want to talk about a little bit of AFL news. Now, I'm sure you listeners, subscribers, followers, everything are well on top of all the news, but I think it's worth a shout out to go. Well done, Mr. Andrew Dillon, getting the new CEO role, stepping in from Gil McLaughlin. It's a bit of an interesting one. I would have thought they might have hopefully gone in a different direction. Hopefully, we get something new, although he has been in the system for a while. So hopefully, we won't just get a whole bunch of the same, same, but different. Um, hopefully he kind of brings some new insights, some new ways of working. But congratulations to him. It'd be an absolute ripper of a job, I can tell you what. But it would come with a lot of stresses. And the other one that we all knew was coming, it's been coming and talked about for about 10 years now, is the 19th license has been officially given out to Tasmania. Uh, what does that mean for the AFL? I'm really interested to see everybody's thoughts here. My opinion is we need to now is the time to start looking at the scheduling Um, and start to make it a little bit fairer. My opinion would be it's either a 19 or 20 round season. Uh, You play every team once, which would obviously be 18 rounds, and then you either have just one derby round and maybe one rivalry round. Um, And that would allow things, and that could sort of obviously, and then each year you alternate. If you played one team home, you play them away the week after. I would like to see the scheduling start to become a little bit fairer rather than keeping it this sort of 23 rounds and then you'd be playing five random teams. That five teams that you play each year, the second time, could be the difference between making the finals or not. So I'd like to see them have a look at the scheduling. Um, It's going to be very interesting. I heard a really cool podcast today that was talking about who they should be targeting, looking at that 2027. Uh, It's the 2019 draft that get to their eighth year, which means they're free agents. Players like Caleb Sarong, Uh, Will Day, uh, those are the players. I wonder whether they'll be targeting them. I think the way that Caleb Sarong's playing, not only in real life, but for fantasy, I think Tasmania should really be looking to target somebody like that. But it'll be interesting to see who they get, and it'll be interesting to see what it means for the draft as well. But here we are talking about fantasy sport and super coach especially. So let's have a little bit of a look as we dive in and start talking about the players who are on the rise. Uh, with really low break-evens. Really big shout-out to the Supercoach Elites. I love this graphic. Thank you so much. for Whoever puts this work in from your team, massive shout-out. I think this just sort of sums things up very simply for everyone and puts it in a really nice, clear graphic for everybody. So anyone who's watching this on YouTube, you can have a look. For anyone who's listening along on all your favorite podcast providers, I will talk you through it. The ones in green there, the ones on the rise. Now, if you haven't already got Alex Sincotter in your team, he's an absolute must to bring in this week. Uh, with a minus 97, he's averaging 78 at the moment. He's at a price of 102,400. Uh, they've only projected his score at 42, which gives him a, a rise of 62,900. Uh, bring him in. I know a lot of people took the chance on him and even bringing him after round one. Um, some people even brought him in in his first week. So they've been rewarded with some decent scores from him. Uh, the DPP makes him even more valuable. 
So if you haven't got him in, I think he's going to be in most active teams this week. Charlie Constable still sitting there. Dear God, he's got to get a game soon, doesn't he? I mean, he's sitting there with that minus 52. I know I'm still holding on to him. I know a lot of people are. I think he's the most watched in the VFL with how many bloody stats he's getting at the moment, those types of things. And with Gold Coast not quite performing the way they were, I would have thought he would have come in by now. Every week, somebody keeps telling me he's a chance, he's a chance, he's a chance. Dear God, this would be the week that I really need him to come in. As we go through this pod, I'm going to start talking about what my thoughts are on this week. I don't want to mind read too much. A lot of my decisions this week will come down to the uh, selected players, and that's going to really talk to me. But I might talk about a few downgrades, upgrades, what the options could be. Um, and also I'm going to talk about one of the buy rounds as well, and, and people need to start looking at their team. There's one particular round, which is going to be on the next slide, that I think everybody needs to start to have a little bit of a look at. Um, as we keep going down the list, Ben King, after his big performance last week, he's got the break even of minus 47. He's still a no touch for me. Um, I think there's better options out there. Sam Simpson's one that I'm not sold on just yet, but with a minus 43 break even, massive price rise if he's picked to play again. If you're going in for a quick cash jab, a quick cash grab, he's the kind of guy that you could get some money from. Um, I don't know how long he holds his spot in that Geelong side, which is really starting to uh, to put some good numbers together and some good wins together as well. Now, will Corey Wagner get picked? That's the million-dollar question as well. He was looking pretty good, I thought, in his second round before he um, he got omitted in that team. But again, Freeman will just continue to look like a rabble, and maybe he's somebody who needs to come back into that side. So with his minus 36 break even, uh, looking at a possible price range rise of about 44K, it's very hard not to look at somebody like a Corey Wagner. Um, I know I'll be looking at him very closely if he's picked. Now, one name that I've seen pop up in a lot of uh, different trades, sort of possibilities that people are doing is, is Ryan Engwin. Again, sort of similar to a Sam Simpson, I'm not sold. I'm nervous on what GWS are going to do. They they keep playing around with different players. You've got uh, Rouston. You've got, you know, obviously their midfield is stacked. You've got Xavier O'Halloran who's back in that side, but, you know, he moved from that inside mid when Tom Green came back to play that half forward role. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where he settles in, but I can see why a lot of people might be picking him, especially with that mid forward DPP. Again, looking to get a quick cash grab. Um, for me, it's unless the Wagners aren't picked and unless a few people aren't picked, I'll probably be steering clear of it. The next name there is the one that I really want to talk about is the Bryn Tickle. Now, the big horse was a big fan of Mr. Tickle um, in our preseason and talked very highly of him. Look, I know people are nervous about the price that he's sitting at. He's sitting at just under that 200 mark, but his job's looking pretty secure there at Port, especially if they keep winning. And there kind of comes a point for me where I've got to go, is the Madden loophole done? And I hold on to the people that I've still got some, you know, the odd dead rookie or the odd rookie that just sort of gets rested for that one week. There's going to be enough people, I believe, to always have that one loophole on the bench. Is it time? Is it time to get rid of the greatest non-playing captain of all time and start finding some cash generation on the bench? For me, Tickle is right there on the cusp of me possibly using one more boost, and I may even do three downgrades this week. And I'll tell you why in a second, and that's when the people who can already see the slide, this one over here, the first gamers, I don't think there's many players coming through on the bubble at the moment. So this to me feels like the last opportunity to really get some sort of cash cows into the team while everybody's sort of starting to upgrade and while everybody's starting to get ready for those buy rounds. Still sitting in there well. I'll, I'll push through a little bit quicker. You've got your Xavier O'Halloran, who I was talking about before. He still kind of relies on kicking a few goals. He loves to get his hands on the footy. He doesn't mind a tackle as well. I think he looks pretty good. I thought about bringing him in last week. He went out and scored about a 61 in the first half and ended up with a 69. So that makes me nervous. I think if you didn't grab him by now, I would leave him alone. I think his price has got a little bit too high. Uh, same with your Ned Moyle. You know, Wits is back in that team now. Um, Ned Long there for Hawthorne. Again, I'm not sold now on any Hawthorne players coming into my side. I think Seamus Mitchell is the last one that you should look to bring in. It's very clear that Sam Mitchell is going to move the magnets around. 
might sub somebody even when they're not the worst player on the field. As we saw, Seamus Mitchell went off as a sub. He definitely wasn't the worst player on that field. Uh, McKenzie's been rested a couple of times. There's going to be different things that he's doing. So for me, I am not touching any more Hawthorne rookies for the rest of this season. A um, few other names on that list, uh, Pitt and Ed, if you wanted to take a risk. I know a lot of people are even looking at doing a possible, you know, put him in the R2 spot. For me, it's don't touch it now. People are looking to upgrade that spot. They're looking at Marshall and going, do I stick a Maxi Gorn in there when his price comes right down? The last thing I think you want to do is give away too many points, especially in your head-to-head battles, uh, by having someone like a pit net in your R2. At any point, they may look to bring DeConning back in when uh, when he's fit and firing to go. So for me, it's a no-go zone. Um, anyone else sort of sitting on there? No one else really sort of jumps out at me too much. Uh, Samson Ryan got everybody – good bit of cash which was nice to see uh and then obviously we hope that uh that matt roberts comes back into the side for sydney it'd be nice to get a little bit more cash out of him as well so we've got here in the middle we'll push on to our food for thoughts and there's some really interesting names in this food for thought uh food for thought section this is where we start looking at some sort of higher price players but um that have some really good be's and and some projected rises um for me with nick newman sitting there at the top he's been really good um, he's now got his BE down to 22 and looking to be a possible rise up of about 37,500. So this is where people who want to take that risk and get somebody in that sort of mid to high priced range. Charlie Kerno, look, is he going to score what he scored again? A humongous game. Um, he sort of looks like that Jeremy Cameron type, but I just wouldn't have enough faith in him to keep going. All the, all the powers of those that can. Uh, Blake Hardwick, actually one of my favorite players at Hawthorne. He's just the guy that gets the job done every single week. Not super coach relevant, in my opinion, sort of up and down. Big shout out to uh, Damien Carroll. He, he gave a really good call to to Adam Chera when the word came out at Carlton that uh, he was going to go to the halfback. And he's he's looked good back there. I think he's gone sort of halfback and then still got a bit of midfield time as well. But he's got his BE down after a couple of really good performances. So he's not the worst shout. Um, I just think there's still better people priced. Um, he's now sitting at 552. So for me, it's probably probably a bit of a no touch, but uh, he has performed well. It's good to see. Uh, the major ones I sort of wanted there, <laughs> Tomahawk, it would be, I wouldn't be doing my Jews for uh, for Mickey Dell if I didn't mention the Tomahawk again. This guy is fit and firing and Geelong are hitting their straps at the moment. They took basically these first five, six rounds have been their preseason uh, we know Tomahawk was injured coming into the year as well. So for me, he's not a bad option still. Uh, and I think he's going to keep scoring. I have to back in the big horse, my co-host, the Mickey Dell, uh, that Tomahawk's going to continue to to perform well. Darcy Moore probably wouldn't touch him. Travis Boak, he just keeps on keeping on, doesn't he? He could be one that also gets a bit of a mid-forward DPP. So it might be one of those ones that I wait to see if he does. Mr. JJ, if he does stick at the halfback, he is much greater value when he is there. Uh, and I'm stoked to see the the Paddy Cripps and the Stephen Canelio sitting there because uh, Paddy Cripps was a bit of my point of difference at the start of the year, which is he's rewarded me for that, him and, him and Mr. Liberatore. And then Canelio, after probably being the man that I pulled my hair out a bit in the uh, in the early rounds, has, has really started to come good, which is which is great to see. And as I said, first gamers, guys, they're in no way, shape, or form, in my opinion. And I'd love everybody to hit us up on the socials if I'm completely wrong. But I don't think there's anyone on the bubble at the moment. You know, Angus Sheldrick, Josh Weddle, uh, Max Ramston. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be touching any of those players. Um, don't worry, guys. If you if you heard that in the background, I think it's just a car backfiring. Unless somebody's going to come in here and uh, come in and murder me with a shotgun, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> Maybe jump a little bit if anyone was watching on YouTube. Um, yeah, I'm not touching. And these first gamers haven't really brought too much uh, too much excitement to me, and therefore I think it's probably probably best to leave them alone and get on the players who are about to rise up right now. A few players there on the decline as well. Jared Lyons. I don't know what's going on with him. He's just been hit by too good of a midfield at Brisbane at the moment. Somebody will probably start to look to to see if there's a spot for him in their uh, in their AFL side because he's too good of a player to be a sub. Uh, Parfit, Wilkie, Blake, he's got a massive break even. Lockie Neal's back up with a big break even. Um, there's nobody here that I really look to move. I know a lot of people have moved LDU. Uh, we talked about Brody Grundy. These are the players that probably should be on your move now. Brody Grundy should be gone. LDU is one that definitely should go. Um, you're going to hold Dawson, you're going to hold Wits. They've got high break-evens above the 150, but that's okay. And Nick Dacos has sort of popped up a little bit higher. 
The interesting one there is Liam Baker. Now, I know a lot of players and, and coaches have brought him in. It was always going to be a risk. Um, we talked about it from day dot. The Daniel Riolis, the Liam Bakers, they can put up some big scores, but the problem is still that consistency between their highest and their lowest score. So anyone that's grabbed him, I think you've maybe got to stick it out with him, but uh, he's got a big break even this year and, and he's looking to drop. So we move on. Now, anyone that's watching on YouTube can see this slide. I want to talk about round 15 of the buys. Carlton, North Melbourne, Port Adelaide, Richmond, Western Bulldogs, and GWS Giants all have a buy in this round. If you are not thinking about this round yet, you are not trying to win it all. Just think about those clubs right now. Like even without thinking, I've got no notes here. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even looking at anything. I look at Tim English, Liberatore, McRae, Bonton Pally, Stephen Canelio, Josh Kelly, uh, Tom Green, uh, Paddy Cripps, uh, Doherty for players who still held on to him, Adam Saad, uh, LDU, uh, Zebel, Sheasel, Rosie, uh, who am I missing? Hopper at Richmond. Uh, who else, who else, who else? Everyone's going to call me out on this. I'm trying to think of like any other players at these teams. I mean, that's without even thinking, just looking at those lists of how many possible players out there are sitting in these teams, really high selected players. Now is the time to start thinking about if you're moving them and switching them or you're starting to make some trades, have a look at the round 15 buy and don't bring these players in just yet. The two teams that I want to suggest that you do start looking at is Geelong and Gold Coast. They have a buy the one week, just those two teams. And when you start thinking about the likes of um, Paddy Dangerfield, Noah Anderson, Tom Hawkins, Jeremy Cameron, uh, Tom Stewart, if you're starting to select some of your players, I urge you now to start looking at these buy rounds and making sure that you're starting to pick the players that best fit in this team. Have a count. If you're not getting those 18 active players, uh, then you've got to start making some moves now or when you are making your trades, really be smart about these buy rounds. So go and have a look. So it's just a little fun fact there for round 15 that I wanted to put to you all Um before you um, go and make some trades. The last thing you want to do is go and make trades, start doing them upgrades, and then you start looking at these players that just when you get to a round, you're stuffed. And if you give in a weak score, I can tell you now, you go from top 5% straight down to the top 15 and all your hard work is done just from a couple of poor moves. Which brings us into the round eight and what that looks like. Now, look, we'll probably have our uh, we'll look to have our live uh, podcast as well to talk about captains and vice captain options and things like that. It's a really tough one to go in here by myself and just start to say what I think the moves need to be. But for me, the big players that must be brought in is Sincotta is an absolute must, um, I would say. Then you've got to start looking. And the other one that I'm talking about is that tickle. Um, look to maybe make those moves are the big changes that I think need to happen. Another one that I do want to point out to people who's not sitting on that list before that didn't that got pointed out was Rory Atkins. Uh, Rory Atkins, I think, is sitting at just over two hundred thousand. Uh, the Gold Coast Suns again fits in well for that round fifteen buy, and uh, he has the he has the defence um, tag on him. He's someone who still knows how to rack up some disposals. I think he had an eighty two in his first round. And I would be looking him as a possibility to bring in. I've got Michael Laney at the moment that I think I've got to possibly start to move. I love how he gets his hands on the footy, but he also just plays a lockdown role. He does it really well. As a player, he's been fantastic. But um, look, I'd love to hear everybody's thoughts. That's what our Twitter sphere is for. Make sure you hit us up at SuperCoachHawk or at Insight underscore FS. Tell me what your thoughts are on your trades, and we'll talk about it on Friday's live pod for me, I'm looking at a couple of different options. It's possibly McKenzie, Madden, Mick, my Michael Laney out. Do I bring in an Anguin or a Corey Wagner? Or And I'm thinking about bringing in a Tickle and an Atkins. The other one is I could just do a straight swap for a set of field. Is it time to move set of field on? Or are you looking to bolster some of your, uh, your depth still in your midfield? So... I don't know. I've looked at what uh, Melbourne have to play. They've got some tough ones coming up. I'm no. I need to get 
Clayton Oliver into my side. And I'd love to hear everyone's thoughts about it. The other one is possibly Tom Stewart. So I really would like to do an upgrade this week or next. Um, and I'm trying to tell myself not to use a boost. But that being said, I think this could be a really perfect week. If you have saved yourself a few boosts, do two downgrades and one upgrade and use that boost because, as I said, I think this is the last time that we're going to see a pretty reasonable bubble. I don't think there's too many players coming through. I could be wrong. This is just my opinion, and I urge you to come back and tell me what you think. Anyways, I think that's enough length of a podcast for you guys having to listen to one voice hopefully there's some good insights there for you to take away next time i guarantee you that i'll have somebody in here sitting with me and hopefully that brings you a little bit more excitement a bit more energy it's not easy doing this by myself but hopefully i've brought you guys a little bit of food for thought this has been the super coach hawk for insight fantasy sports podcast peace out